The Northmen tell of a great hero. His name is Sigmund. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day, Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him, so King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens. As 
the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face. He bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. What's your name? Senua. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait. Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well, I... I watched you. And... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. Me? I'm Dillian. I'm here for the warrior trials. You come and watch. And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her world changed the day the Northmen took him from her. Senua knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide, and don't tell Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up!
Sigmund's sister trades ships with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, and finds him strong and fearless, and so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. But luck is not on their side. They're captured and Sigir has them buried alive. As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out but only to tell him the truth. That she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay. Is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram.
forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death. Because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She's a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrving.
Dillian, I'm here. I'm here for the trials. Like when we first met, remember? I'll find him. Herver disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. The voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. Listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. You're getting closer. Keep going. Send him follow the voice. We're nearly there. Dillian's voice. It's him. He's going to save you. Find the voice. Find him.
<laughs> Where are we? She has no idea. We're going round us. You have fallen in. You think that sound is Dillian's voice? It's the same. Within the burial mound, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> Herver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens, and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance. But her father warns her that the sword is cursed and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it, but the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Senua, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter.
kepala. I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it in my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy. The chief has no. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. No! I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! say that their all-father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. Can you hear me? I'm right here. Can you see me? No. Help me. Breathe slow. It's the darkness. Stay still. Empty your thoughts. Tell me what you feel. A breeze. Good. Then there is a way out. I can't tell where it comes from. Yes, you can. The others, 
The voices, they've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet, so dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise and fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I can't go on. Do you? Find a way. I'm not leaving you here. I think I'm somewhere else now. But the breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. Let's reach the water. Good. That's your way out. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of him. It won't let me go. Shenoa. My father. He taught me the hardest battles of fought in the mind. Not the soul. You're no coward. Prove that to me in warrior triumph. This is just another battle. You can beat it. This isn't real battle. You don't have to help me. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. We need people like you. Okay. I'll do my best. Water. I can't go on this way. Then look for another way and tell me what you find. There is a house. <gasps> I don't know what's inside. Don't be afraid.
not following me. Leave it behind. There's more of them. I think they're moving. You're breathing too fast. I'm scared. This is the sound of your breath. In and out. In and out. I think I'm in a house. It stinks. Of death. The darkness is testing you. But you are in control. well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. <laughs> Tell you. Help me. She could 
spend hours, days even, trapped within herself in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere, with no memory of how she got there. When it comes for me, I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, Someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness, swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. You can feel it. 
You need the runes to fight Delia. You need Delia. He's waiting for you. He said. He, he's close. He's about you. He's close. He loves you. so simple. Black and white. Darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. Whatever they do, the gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, Is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Thank you. 
with him. Where are you taking him? He's, he's up there. There's a way up there. Find the way. She can do it. You're nearly there. She can find the way. Dillian doesn't know who killed him, but we do. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking pollen. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Hurth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Hurth is slain. how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband, and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend. Dilly struggled him. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. The shadow of darkness never let her go. And she was caught between two walls. That of Zinbel and her past. Dillion. Future. Two realities tearing at her soul. Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. 
If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur. Weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let Hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. Druids, like her father, Zinbel. 
I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see. Very and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, had to see the world through his eyes. Slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. Should we fix them by taking away their sight? You give up the beautiful world. You, and only you can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my head. Just another part of the person I love. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking them from the inside. You're disappearing one memory. Everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. I think they want your body. They want your soul. They want your mind, and they're going to take it. The memories were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? It's creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? This is where he is. There he is. The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. Find He's going in. He's disappearing. Follow him. Don't let him disappear. The air is gone. Keep going. How do you find it? It's just a trial. It's just another test. You just have to solve it, and then you will find him. Then you will succeed. <laughs> it's a test. Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me. The stench of rot. Do you smell it? No. Don't worry. Not everyone can. It was a spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. But no one else could. She knew something was wrong. Something sinister. 
She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farm hands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. That is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, and beware, because there will be death in that house. Disappear soon. Find a way. Up to you. It's another test. Don't fail. The light is still glowing, but soon it will go out. You haven't failed yet. You mustn't fail. Come to me. Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in there? Where is he? Find Come him. out if you are. You have to find him. The rules. Focus. The rules. There was a Northman called Grettir. Big, red-haired, immensely strong. But he was afraid of the dark. It happened one night that an undead creature came to his house to drag him outside into darkness and kill him. He resisted with every ounce of his strength. He clung to the doorframe, but it gave way, and they spilled out of the house, and the monster fell back, and the moon shone down on its ghastly face. Grettir, terrified, cuts off its head, but is cursed forever. From that moment on, wherever he was, he would see those hideous eyes staring back at him. Sometimes we allow our own fear to haunt us to our grave. What's that sound? 
Shano, what happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? 
None of us are. They're just people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. That doesn't make no What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillian was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. strength to pass the warrior trials and she saw a way out to leave her past behind and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. Years later, with Zinbel's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Tony? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us! <laughs> you have blood on your hands! They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them. The ship that had sailed from a land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun. Come not with a sword. Come not crying over a naked corpse. Come not with disturbed mind. She's lost. She's lost. 
She doesn't know where she's trying to get to. Is there any escape? 